Hello, Billy the Artist here, back with another How to Draw lesson. And today, at last, we are back with a Harry Potter one, and we're doing Professor McGonagall. Dame Maggie Smith, as well, that wonderful teacher in the stories, uh, and, and it's just great. Like I say, we're going to do this fantastic portrait of Professor McGonagall. Before we go any further, please do like and subscribe. Tick the bell to be notified when new drawing lessons are going to come online. Again, that, I, I've just got so many that I can do. It's a joy. Thank you uh, to everyone who is enjoying these lessons. Again, here we have Ariana Grande, we have Harry Potter, we have Queen Bob from the Trolls. Now again, this covers a lot of things. We have Harry Potter in the How to Draw Harry Potter playlist. There's lots already. There's going to be many, many more. This one's from quite a while ago. People are still loving drawing Harry and there's so many things from the Harry Potter series that we can do. Ariana Grande, is in the How to Draw Portraits playlist. That's just specifically portraits. Harry is specifically Harry. But I said, we've done now uh, the BTS guys. And I said I would come back and we would be back after finishing. Oh, so there is Jungkook and V. We did those guys. Again, I've just got to be careful. Then we have got Sugar and RM. And they were, that was getting four of them done. And then we had Jimin. And we completed him. And then the last two, Jin and J-Hope. So again, you can see the multi-image. Please do share all of the, the how to draw lessons of the BTS guys with the BTS army. And the time lapses, it's great to put the little three minute overview together, but it's also fantastic to share with you the full portrait stuff. Now, we use the grid for these portraits. Now, he says, I thought I had that lurking, but I don't. Now, again, we for all of these, the BTS guys and Ariana Grande, I did the grid in a particular way that meant it was using the centre line and I was using the numbers, I was referencing numbers but I will just bring in this fella quickly we have, and it's in the description, how to draw Olaf I did this a very long time ago and I wish that I had done this kind of grid where we've got A, B, C, D, E, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 down the side Again, that's a bigger grid, still on A4 paper, and I use A4 paper. But somebody asked, how could they, what are the dimensions to upscale the grid that I've used on all of my portraits so far? And we're going to use a new one today, like on Ariana Grande. How could they upscale it to A3? Basically making it bigger. Now, you multiply everything by 1.41, and or it's 141% bigger. It's Then you've got a load of maths. And it just makes things difficult because I'd got this little five centimetre border around the outside. I thought I'd actually got a sheet with it on. Anyway, that's disappeared. But what I've decided to do is go back to this grid like I used on Olaf, but using a two centimetre grid. Now, I'm going to remove Ariana and again the link for the old grid is in the community do the reference for the image for Maggie Smith uh, as Professor McGonagall is in the community tab on my YouTube channel link is in the description so do check that out we do have uh, and I've put the reference I've also put up the old grid a PNG a transparent PNG file but this is uh, my new so I've got some bits on the page. This is the new grid in pencil down. And it just makes sense. So here, if you look now, if you click in the link now, this is the new how to draw the grids video. So check it out, share it. This is what's going to be used. And again, in the community page, there's a PNG of this grid for A4. And that's, this is what I am going to be using now for the future because it makes it simpler for people who want to scale the drawing either smaller or larger and we've got a two centimeter grid and i've got a to j 
and 1 to 14. But it doesn't matter if you're using metric centimetres or inches imperial. So you could have, as long as you've got A to J, as long as you've got 10 squares that are one inch or one and a half inches or two inches, it doesn't matter what size you do because we're using the grid in proportion. So you could even have one centimetre squares going across 10 and then this last line is half. It's only one centimetre on this. So it would be half a centimetre if you were using a one centimetre grid. If you're doing four centimetre squares, it would be two centimetres, that end bit. And again, just draw the space at the bottom a little bit larger and you'll be fine. You could do it in inches. So you could have two inches and then the last line will be one inch wide. It makes, and I explain all this and you see me laying this grid down in real time. Again, I've done this in pen, but I've done this in pencil. Uh, to help you to grow and develop your skills. Now, I put these lines down so you can see them darker than you have to. And again, in the video, you will actually see me drawing it in felt at pen that you've seen on there but you'll see me actually drawing it very lightly with a 2h pencil and you just can't see it so you draw these lines lighter that makes things better and i explain a whole load more again in the banner there's just uh, a description about these actual two centimeter grids so a4 is 21 by 29.7 centimeters which is 210 by 20, 297 millimetres. And so every square from this corner we go over is two centimetres, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. And that's what you need to do. But if you're using inches, you just go one, two, three, four inch. And that's how simple it is. You can then scale it to exactly how you need to do it. So brilliant opportunity to now develop many many drawing lessons i know this is a long introduction i do put the skip time at the beginning but now we are going to get on with doing our drawing and i have just found the old grid it's just flown off because it was underneath something else anyway now we come in with the trusty 2b pencil to draw professor mcgonagall and so we've got this new grid and this new way of drawing it Oh, and I said I didn't say in previously how to draw anything part one using shapes. We will use shapes to just grow and develop areas of this drawing. I, I use the shapes. You can just do it as a dot to dot, which you'll see in Olaf, but we use shapes to grow and develop this drawing. So now let's crack on and draw Professor McGonagall. So now we can see on the F line. If we come down to F7, it's a bit like playing battleships, right on this point here, we have got Dame Maggie Smith's nose. And we can come over and I'm just putting a little box in, that's the kind of side of a nostril, little curve there, that's uh, the actual nostril in the nose. If we go up and above, now we can come up between five and six and there we see we've got a triangle and then just to the right of the f6 we can see we've got the diagonal line and this comes down to a very bright highlight so i am being a little bit light but we've got a long rectangle there now that's the light going up uh, the highlight on the edge of a nose. Now I'm just putting a rectangle there going through the number five line and that's the crease in between her two eyebrows. Now again we can see we've just got this kind of sh shape. There's a, a curved line at the top and this is the shadow and in, in between the two eyebrows. Now this eyebrow between F and G above the five goes through the five line and it's very angular. So I'm just drawing a long thin rectangle. And then here we've got this that triangle of highlight on the side of the forehead. Now again, 
underneath their eye here we've got another little triangle coming off the eyebrow and we want this semicircle that comes right over to the F line kind of below the halfway point and joins and this is going to be her upper eyelid and then we just do the curve over now we've got that kind of crescent shape a banana shape then do the same going underneath down here we can show the lower eyelid again just this kind of u shape it comes around and then we can do that rectangle curved rectangle shape which is the bag underneath her lower eyelid the lower eyelid itself now her eyeball and we just got you can imagine you've got the ellipse there for the full eyeball and then the pupil inside. Now here we've just got this little kind of C shape that's between the five and six line and then we've got coming down I'm just going to draw a long line that comes down to the eight and that's the edge of a face. Now we've got some little wiggle lines but we'll go over them a little bit later and then between the eight and nine, we've got a little triangle there, and that's the edge of a chin. And then we've got the shape of a chin at the end, so I'm just pouring a little oval in. And then coming across here, we've got the triangle of a jaw, and then we've got that crease line going up to an ear, which is below the seven. And again, it's just another little triangle there. Now the ear is kind of diagonal so I'm just drawing a rectangle in first for where the shape of the ear is and right on the B6 line there we can see we've got this kind of C shape inside that rectangle. And we can just kind of curve the ear around and that works for us. Now we've got again above the ear goes up through the centre part so I'm just increasing that line over a little bit which is the edge of the ear rather than just a straight rectangle and then here we've got a little V shape a little triangle this is the dark and the edge of her hat comes up to the D4 line just comes through underneath and that's the edge of a hat coming up and over now we've got again I'm just carefully looking like an Olaf it's a bit like a dot to dot so yes we've got a rectangle but it's slightly curved and that's the shape going in there and we can see the curve comes over past the C so if we just put some dots in you can see there's got the C there and then you come over to A5 and you can see the brim of the hat it's going to come across that way and then goes off right on the edge and then below the seven we've just got that line of the hat underneath where it comes around the back of a neck and a hair that how it's tied up behind again just you can just see a little triangle shape there where you've got that little bit of red hair showing and that helps us to build up that shape now again, if we come up to the E6 line, this is where her eye is now. And I'm just going to draw this kind of oval. So we've got the lower eye curving around, and the upper eye curving over, and comes down to that point there. Now her upper eyelid, we can see here, we've got a, it, it is like a rectangle. So that's a great shape to put in and then we've got the curve you can see like a D shape that comes around inside to the nose and then underneath just to the right of the E line coming under the six we can follow the shape and draw the lower eyelid underneath now 
need to just push that eye out into the tear duct a little bit more because right on the E line we've got the iris. The shape of the iris and then the pupil underneath and then we've got quite a strong highlight so I'm just drawing that little rectangle of highlight that we'll leave showing and we can accentuate that later. Now here coming up onto the five line we've just got a rectangle for the eyebrow it's like an inverted V and then you can see coming off the back I love doing this I hope you do this is an absolute joy uh, we've got our eyebrow coming off the back uh, I know it seems I don't know if you can see that but the hairs are up on my arm I really truly love sharing how to draw with you guys it's fantastic it's an absolute pleasure so again we're just putting these shapes in using the grid as reference points so we come up here now to just below the five line on the G and we've got another rectangle this is the hair off at the side it's in that highlighted bit now here straight away you've got the dark and you can see it's just a triangle it's just the underneath part of the hat going around the left hand side of a face we can see a very simple triangle and that comes down to there now again it's a little bit more of a detailed shape but you can see just a basic shape there and then above we can bring that rectangle down and that's that cover part there now on the F we've got a simple long record uh, shape just oh, it's, a, it's, it's a curved rectangle and it comes down through the a.4 and that's the kind of lower part of the brim of a hat where there's that kind of knitted braided part that sits at the bottom and then we've got the kind of funnel that comes off up to the d and then we come down by the side of the a to the two and then we've got this little triangle there now again that's not overly detailed we can build the detail up after so again on the eye up here we can see we've got a better triangle that actually comes down to there and then the triangle comes over and actually comes through the h lower than the four and that's how we just build the shapes up you're just using construction lines and again i must apologize i've not put the kind of block in front of my camera to stop my head so if my hair has been coming in all this again at the beginning i do apologize uh, but i don't think it has too much now we have dame maggie smith's pursed lips so coming down from underneath the nose in fact just coming off the edge here of the nose we've got a v shape and that's the crease line going down to a mouth and then we want the same we've got a v shape coming off there and that's the side and now we've got a lips so right on the f line on the eight we've got the lower lip so we've just got this little kind of u shape that comes around we've got the, the the lipstick bit inside but then you've got this shadow crease that comes off right to the corner I'm just going to draw a straight line but we have got a little bit of a wiggle now just to the left of the F we've got a little V there and then we've got a triangle to the right and then a triangle coming down to the corner of the mouth again we want that lovely tight pursed lip a little triangle for the bit between the upper lip and the bottom of the nose again we've just got some little crease lines in the face and coming off down by the chin we've got a crease line and we've got this curved shape to underneath the chin and this will be an interesting drawing because she's got so many lovely creases in her eyes uh, and around her face so again we've got this little v-shape underneath this eye 
you can kind of see that edge going off. Now we've got a rectangle there which gives us that light part and that's going to come over. Now coming down from a neck again we've got this incredible large rectangle so here we can see it comes down through the 9 and to the below the 10 and this is like a kind of high collar and it's in the shadow and then between D and E we're just above the 11 line so that's that kind of rectangle for that one and then coming down to the 13 we've got the front of her blouse underneath her robes kind of jacket and again this is a long rectangle if we come up on the 11c we can see where that comes across it just kind of runs in parallel we need to come to the 13 and now we've got that rectangle shape there now on this we'll do the collar on this side and again this this goes up and actually goes through the 10b so you can see we've got that goes up to the neck that's it's in shadow but we can just build these lines in and there on the b between 10 uh, 11 and 12 we've just got the edge of the collar that goes up and we need to bring that now down all the way to the bottom and then the shoulder goes off to the edge again we've got some creases I'm just putting little shapes in there's a V there on that highlight diagonal line above the 14 we've got that other crease that's underneath now on her left side of her robes we come above the 10 we can see how that kind of goes up to where the collar is about halfway and then just comes down through the G line between 11 and 12 and then goes down to the bottom now we want to build that collar up as well and then this comes down lovely And then we want a left shoulder that comes off so here we've got a triangle you can see we've got that triangle that goes across those two squares there and then it just curves down now again there's lots of patterning on these and, and the braiding and you can use the grids to just indicate where they are very quickly again I'm just putting some long thin rectangle lines in just to indicate quite quickly where that pattern needs to be. And we've got a little fold by the edge. Then below the 12 line, that's where I'm at. Like I say, you just keep looking at your reference. And this helps give your hand and eye coordination a real boost so again don't think that this is cheating in any way shape or form uh, and I do mention in and if you look at Olaf you see John Constable he used grits British landscape artist Supremo and there's so many different people in history who've, who've used grits so here we've just got I'm just putting some little oval shapes in like little wiggly wiggly worms or coffee beans really there's two there and then in between they come up there's two in this square and I explain how hundreds of years ago Canaletto used to go out into the streets and areas of Venice with a little box camera obscura and he'd set it up and then just start drawing because he got a lens on the front and a mirror inside and a glass plate on top he put tracing paper on the top kind of shielded it with a couple of boards 
and he just basically traced what was in front of him and then he went back to his studio and projected it. And that's hundreds of years ago. So it's kind of let a cheat. Uh, again, don't let people make out that you are doing something wrong. So again, now we've got this, we can see a little bit more of the detail on this side. Coming down to the 13 line. And again, I'm just whacking in some shapes quite quickly because these details are your foundation and here we've got wiggly line quick wiggly line again these are very very quick so on the 13 on the B again I'm just indicating the direction that these lines are going so then you come above under the 12 we'll put all the coffee beans in and everything with the more detailed outline next now I'm doing the same on this side just indicating there's a banana shape for that crease little rectangle for that crease rectangle for that crease going up to the neck Again, just some creases, a little triangle. And that's looking pretty good. That's just a very, very quick way of getting the outline down using very basic shapes on top of the grid. So just sharpening my pencil to get a decent point. Now I'm back in with uh, the 2B pencil. And we're going to put the detailed line in and we're going to start with Professor McGonagall's left eye. So we're on and I'm going to use this paper to stop my hand from smudging all the drawing. And so the eye is on the F line between five and six. And it starts, it's a little bit below the halfway point. You see we've got this curve. Again, I'm going to be drawing these lines quite dark. So this curves over. And then the top of the eyelid curves. Comes over to this V point. Then we've got the edge of the eyeball. And the iris curves down and around and then we want the pupil we've got this fantastic underneath piece of an eye and again we can just indicate some of the eyelashes going off onto that side now, like on this side, there is a little bit of a highlight. So I'm just drawing a little shape to protect the highlight in the green eyes. And I'm putting in a pupil. Now, the green eyes are very light. I've just filled that in very carefully. Now, the curve above, we can see We've got this fantastic curved shape that makes this kind of, it's like a sea that's fallen over, a crescent shape. It comes over, but it folds off. It doesn't come right to the F line. It just comes across a little bit and then starts its curve up and over or coming down. Now, her eyebrow that we've got above I'm not going to press on as dark. That comes all the way over to about there and then follows the trajectory down to the edge of a nose to the left of the F line. And we can see where we've got the curve of the nose starts to come down underneath and it's just above the, the six line on the horizontal 
and we've got this fantastic highlight. So I'm not going to draw the nose all the way down, so you kind of reverse drawing out. So we're going to come down and curve around where we've got this bag under her eye. Now again, I'm not pressing on too dark because I don't want too dark a line there. And then we've got the curve going up to underneath the eyeball. But we now need to extend the eyeball down. And then we've got this fantastic curve with highlight on of the lower eyelid. And that comes up. And this is where we've got the tear duct right in the corner. And the tear duct's got a highlight, so I'm just indicating where that is. Then we've got this fantastic kind of vein bloodline in her eye. Now, we follow the trajectory round underneath. We've got that fantastic thick line of highlight for the upper part of a lower eyelid. Now, the edge of a head, she's got the curve coming up to the five line. Curves to where the eyebrow is, and then we just want a slight curve going up. And then it goes through the four, right the way up to underneath the hat. And then we've got the hair on the edge. And that just comes down and follows inside where the hat is. And already you can see we've got a really nice eye starting to look out at us. Now if we come over and do McGonagall's right eye of Gryffindor, we're on the E line. We want this curve to come over And then it comes down to the corner point. The edge of the iris. Again, I'm kind of drawing it soft. I'm just going to soften this one off a little bit. And then we want the pupil in, leaving that highlight up at the top. Again, I'm just indicating the iris very lightly. Now, going to the tear duct, we've got that line that comes round, comes down onto the six the inner part next to the eyeball of the upper eyelid. See how that curves across. And again, just like on this side, we've got this fantastic ledge of the upper part of a lower eyelid. And that curves around, comes up. And then we've got this little kind of, almost a heart shape, and that's the tear duct in that corner. And then above, we've got a dark crease line that comes over. And then we've got the shape of the upper eyelid and the eye socket on this D shape that comes over. And there we have the shadow going up to the curve over. In the upper eyelid and we've got more of the crease lines coming over and this is going to be you know something after the BTS guys drawing someone with creases in the face is going to be an absolute change and this is the thing you're learning drawing techniques to adapt you're making marks with a pencil and that's what you've got to develop so here now come down off the eye, 
we've got the bag under the left eye that curve and then we've got that V shape there so now we come to her nostril and the side of her nose and her right nostril and we're on the seven line we've got the curve that comes around this is this C shape going up into the square and that's where it joins the cheek and then we've got this little curve over that comes to the nose and it's just to the left of the F line but above the 7 ever so slightly darker at the top and a little bit of shade underneath now nose going off we can see we've got this curved shape and then the bit that comes down we've got the shadow that comes underneath and then this little thin triangle that goes down to her lips and then we've got the very edge of the left nostril just comes down and touches the seven and then we've got this little bit of shadow that's coming off to the edge and already you can see we can we've got very distinctive eyes starting to look out at us so now we want a cheek that comes down below the six and then it curves across and then just starts to go vertical and you can see how the line is in line with the corner of her eye and the edge of her eye socket just off vertical it comes down below the seven and then we get another little kink and then it comes down again to above the eight and then we get another little kink that starts to come right across for her chin and now we want the chin it needs to come a bit lower I say we just put those shapes in so the chin is going to come down just above the nine line we've got that shape that goes under comes to the E we can just join that up And then we've got the shape of a cheek that comes off. So here we've got this line that comes down and curves back up to this dark little area here, right on the edge of a cheek next to the upper part of a collar. And then that collar comes up, goes through the C below the eight, off to the back. And then comes down like say we went into that shadow and we've got curve goes up to a lower earlobe and we've got the curve of the ear that comes up goes up to about the halfway point so we need to direct that and the, the black will cover off for us so again, we're just on, on the B coming up to the 6. We've got that curve that comes up and then we've got a hair coming across the top of the ear. And then halfway between B and C, we've got the edge of her ear as it joins the side of her face. And then we've just got a little crease line that comes down. And we've got the entrance to her ear canal, this C shape. That comes over, curve that comes around and under. And then we've got this little V shape. It's a bit fuzzy and that's a hair underneath the hat. 
and we can follow the brim of the hat. As it comes up above the forehead, curves across through the G. This is kind of very shadowed. So I'm going to come right the way out, just past the eye above the two. And then we can follow the lines down where they come through and then come to the eye on the side. And we've got the lines for the brim of the hat. So now following the edge we come across to the H and it's just underneath, it's above the construction line, the triangle that we did because it's just slightly curved. And that comes across, if we come above the forehead on the F it's above the 3. And that helps us to draw curve line of the brim of a hat coming down and then we've got that edge that goes around. That's looking absolutely lovely. So now I'm just going to sharpen my pencil because I want to do ellipse but I don't want to have a thick line. So we're starting right next to the F We've got that little V and then it just curves over a little bit and we've got the corner crease, the edge of a mouth. Now underneath the V we've got the centre line between her upper lip and lower lip but it's slightly curved and then curved again to the edge. And then her pursed lips on the top of her upper lip. We've got that curve that comes over. It pretty much it, it's just to the right of the E line. So now we've got the lipstick bit. And that goes just through the F a little bit further over on the left hand side than it is on the right and it curves up and goes over to the corner of the mouth and we've got that slightly curved bit going over and then we've got this shadow line underneath we've got these fantastic creases in the lips that will help us with the detail when we come to the shading afterwards. Now, the curve underneath the chin is in that crease line, it's just below the eight. And this is where using the grids will help you with all the creases. And then the crease line coming off and the side of a mouth we've got that triangle going up to the nose. We've got, so that's the triangle crease and we've got one, two, three. Got one, two, three, going up off the lip. Now on the seven line on the D, this is where we can see we've got this crease coming down. And again, we can kind of wing it with some of them, but it just means you've got the right place for a number of your creases in the face. And that's a good thing. But there you can see we've got a good outline just of Professor McGonagall. So now quickly, because everything else is done for us very easily, we can 
go over I'm using the soft of the pencil here we've got a kind of c-shape going up to the brim of the hat we can see how this comes off but it's just a little bit wobbly because it's soft fabric you, know, you don't want a solid straight line of the hat going up again coming down just from the right of the D that comes down and we've got curve it comes over through the D towards the C above the two bit of shadow then through the F and the E got that shadow on the edge that comes down cross that's the top of the hat now coming down on the collar this needs to come down and around this is going to be a stunning cracking drawing to work on again now we want we've got this dark edge the edge of a collar coming down of a cloak and then we just got like say the, the embroidery patterning just gives us some little nobbles as it comes down her arm um, and again, I'm just looking and I'm seeing where I can put the shade of the kind of knobbly bits <clears throat> technical term for embroidery that is and uh, embellishments that's better and this will help when we put the detail in as we come down like I say these are they kind of like coffee beans little shapes that's a bit more of a banana shape you, know, you can think of maggots little worms coffee beans it just helps you with placing the shapes quickly now again I'm doing these really quickly and impressionistically because uh, I just want to get this up as a real-time drawing lesson and so we've got this edge that comes down comes below the 10 line and then that goes off on the shoulder and here we've got this incredible dark shadow so now I'm going to use the flat of the pencil to indicate where the shadows are rather than the dark line because it's the fabric so now below the 12 got that triangle there curve of that fabric that comes over again it's just indicating where the creases are coming up through the 12 And again I'm going to do these even the, the the fabric I will do quickly and impressionistically if you want to do it more photographically it will take a lot of hours but again you can just put these lines in quite quickly so now again we've got these shapes so below the 11 I've got a kind of coffee bean shape so on there coming below the 12 another one in the middle it's just kind of wiggly two layers of tracking embroidery in between and that goes off up into the shadows then we've got the second layer little kind of wiggly bit there comes down we've got that V so there's the tracking and it comes down little e c shape there 
and that comes over again we've got the tracking comes through of the 13 got another c shape there comes down all the way so again oh, nearly through my pencil again soft side of the pencil for this shadow line Again, I'm just loosely indicating now the kind of coffee beans and the tracking as that comes over. And that's in shadow. There we have a good full outline down of Professor McGonagall. Now we need to just rub out everything. So I've got my Mars plastic eraser. I'm going to rub out quickly all of the large areas. And this is a really difficult thing to do like on the, the detail bits I'm going to lose loads of drawing if I try and go around a face because it's so big you need to be oh, nearly through my pencil again careful but this is where if, if you use a 2H pencil and draw the lines very lightly you can rub them out so much easier again I do I love doing this because it, it it means you can actually see all the construction lines and the working out now there's loads all down here which is why I'm now oh, I've got the larger one that's a big area and I'm holding the paper with this to stop uh, the paper from plinging off because I've only got little bits of masking tape holding it on. And again, I do that so that you can see it complete. So again, this now. I can come in the face and inside the hat and actually get a lot of the lines out from the grid quite quickly because there's more fine tuning with this size of eraser and then I've got the electric one I keep saying I'm going to try and get a manual one but I may not I may never end up getting one because all this lot works so just use the equipment that I've got and and then obviously I use the putty rubbers. So again, in between these lines now, down the edge, it's just very easy to erase these out and I don't lose that much of all of my construction lines of my drawing. Even though it will rub out a little bit, I'm not losing that much. So I can get in between these beans and little maggots and worms that I've drawn. So again, on the chin, get rid of some of those construction lines up the side of the cheek. So again, it's now a bit difficult in and around the face. So now I'm just gonna sweep that off quickly. And then come back in with my eraser, electric eraser, and I can now just pull out these bits in between the creases in McGonagall's face and around her eyes that would basically disrupt the drawing, say underneath. And even though it will rub out a little bit, I'm not losing too much. Right next to the face. Up the edge. 
and inside the ear. Now again, I can now sweep that off. And there you can see, we've got a clean full drawing outline of McGonagall.